Munitaka Murakami is coming to Major League Baseball, just not yet. For those of you who are hearing his name for the first time, please have a seat, get comfortable, because you're in for a real treat today. Munitaka Murakami is the third baseman for the Occult Swallows in Japan's MLB equivalent, which is called the Nippon Professional Baseball League, often abbreviated MPB. Just last month on December 9th, the Swallows signed Murakami to a three-year contract extension that will pay him an equivalent to $4.4 million a year in US currency. After that contract extension expires, Murakami announced that he will be coming to the MLB. In terms of what teams he may prefer to sign with, he stated to the press, ideally I'd like to play for a West Coast team, but I'm also interested in the New York Yankees. The teams that come to mind immediately on the West Coast as frontrunners for his services are the Giants, Dodgers, Padres, and Angels. Sorry, Oakland. Considering the Padres signed Bogarts to an absurd contract and also made offers to Trey Turner and Aaron Judge, I would not count them out in the Murakami sweepstakes. Can you imagine pairing Murakami in an infield that already features Bogarts, Machado, Cronenworth, and ha Sung Kim? Although that's assuming that they're all still there in three years, which seems unlikely. Considering that Murakami's defensive metrics aren't the most favorable, it might make sense that he could see everyday playing time in the majors at some other infield positions, in addition to his current position of third base. Murakami was drafted as a catcher, so it might even make sense that an MLB team would have interest in returning him to his natural position when that time comes. Murakami's manager on the Swallows, Takatsu, stated to the press that he was drafted as a catcher, so his infield defense initially was terrible. He's come a long way since then, but he still has work to do to improve defensively. He already practices a lot, so it won't take away from his batting at all. There's a lot of possibilities for Murakami, and I cannot wait to see what will happen after the 2025 season when he becomes a free agent. And when that happens, there will be an entire bank heading Murakami's way, because he's going to get paid big time. There will be no restriction in terms of MLB's international bonus pool money, meaning that the restrictions that Shohei Otani had to face to sign with an MLB club will not be in place for Murakami. There have been speculations saying that he could get a contract exceeding $300 million. Wow. Which I think might be shooting a little too high, but in this day and age, you just don't know. Murakami will only be 25 years old, so that is plausible to see an MLB team willing to give him at least 10 years, which would be an extremely high risk for a guy with zero MLB or minor league experience. But if it pays off, whichever team receives Murakami will be getting an MVP candidate year in and year out. On top of that bag that Murakami will be paid by his future MLB club, they will also be subject to a posting fee that could resemble a luxury tax, much like Steve Cohen of the Mets is no stranger to. A hypothetical $300 million contract would come with an almost $47 million posting fee, in addition to the total amount of the contract. Alright, so that was a lot of hypotheticals and possibilities for a guy we don't know a ton about. So how good is he at playing baseball, you might ask? Murakami, according to reporter Mike Exiza, is described as, quote, the best hitter in the world not employed by an MLB team. Simply put, he is the best hitter in the MPB, and it's not really close. Last year with the Occult Swallows, Murakami's slash line was absurd, as he hit 318 with a 458 on base percentage and a 711 slugging percentage. Nice. He crushed 56 homers, which broke the NPB single season record previously held by Sadaharu O. Oh. He was able to make history on his final at bat of the season, amazingly. Murakami and Aaron Judge of the Yankees had similar parallels in their home run chase, as Judge too came down to the wire in the chase of Roger Maris' 61 homers. In addition to the 56 homers, Murakami drove in 134, hit 21 doubles, and stole 12 bases. One important thing you should know about the MPB is that they only play 143 games compared to MLB's 162. Murakami's rate at hitting home runs is nearly identical to that of Judge's if you account for the lesser games played in the MPB. The cherry on top for Murakami was that he won the triple crown of the MPB, meaning he led the league in batting average, home runs, and RBIs. Aaron Judge in 2022 made an attempt to win the Triple Crown, but finished one category short, as he fell off in batting average towards the end of the year. Whenever there's an insane talent coming out of Japan, you'll hear people around baseball say that the league is not on par with the MLB, and that the stats that players post in the MPB won't even resemble what they will be in the MLB. Now the one counter argument I have to those people is that you can't magically fix bat to ball and on base skills, and Murakami has both. While he did strike out 128 times in 141 games, he walked 118 times, nearly getting to that elusive 1 to 1 walk to strikeout ratio that you will oftentimes hear about. Juan Soto and a select few others go a step further and walk more than they strike out, but those players are far and few between in Major League Baseball. The other thing that will 100% translate to the Major Leagues is his stature. 
At 6'2 and 213 pounds, he is built to hit home runs. Obviously, there are exceptions to this rule, but in terms of easy power, Murakami has a quick, compact swing that reminds me of a current MLB player that many believe to be one of the game's all-time greats, Mike Trout. Now, Murakami is a left-handed hitter, but for some reason in terms of the way he's built, he reminds me of Mike Trout, and not just in terms of his build. Like I mentioned, he has such a sweet, compact swing, and so does Mike Trout. In terms of right-handed hitters, there might not be a better swing in the game today. Let's take a side-by-side -side look at Trout and Murakami's swing. While it's not a carbon copy by any means, the biggest thing I notice is the hands being held high to start, then quickly jolting back into a ready position, and if you blink, you'll miss their hands going straight to the ball. The mechanics are there for Murakami, and it's especially present when he turns on baseballs, even against some same-sided left-handed pitchers. In the majors, if you can turn on an inside fastball against a left-handed pitcher, you better wish the opposing pitcher some good luck. Left-handed hitters are often known for their sweet swings, but they can also get long, especially for power hitters. I can see Murakami's swing translating nicely to Major League Baseball. In 2022, if Murakami was playing for an MLB team, and put up the numbers he did, he would have finished third in average, second in homers, only behind Aaron Judge's 62, led the league in RBIs by three, second in walks, first in on-base percentage by a large margin at 33 points, first in slugging, and first in OPS. If he puts up a season anything like he did in 2022 in the major leagues, he will at the very least garner some MVP attention. And if he's the player that I think he is, I would not be surprised to see him take home silver sluggers and an MVP award. While last year was the first time Murakami surpassed 40 homers, he has had sustained success since his first professional season in 2018. This season he played with the Eastern League, essentially the equivalent of playing in the minor leagues in Major League Baseball. In the 2018 season, he hit 18 homers, drove in 72, stole 16 bases, and posted an 869 OPS in only 104 games. 2019 was Murakami's true rookie season. His power numbers exploded as he hit 36 homers and 96 RBIs. He won the Rookie of the Year for the Central League, the highest level of the MPB. In 2020, he was able to up the ante and surpassed a 1,000 OPS and 300 average for the first time in his career. The MPB also had a shortened season, albeit it was double what the MLB was able to play at 120 games. In 2021, Murakami would put together his best season yet hitting 39 homers, driving at 112, and surpassing 100 walks to go along with a fantastic 974 OPS. He earned MVP honors after this fantastic campaign. Even if 2021 was Murakami's ceiling, he would still be one of the most highly sought after players in NPB history. However, Murakami was still just 21 years old and had a lot of untapped potential. He reached new heights in 2022. In 141 games, he posted career highs in just about every stat imaginable. 155 hits, 56 homers, 134 RBIs, and 12 stolen bases to go along with the absurd slash line that saw him have an OPS and an astronomically high number, 1.168. His 56 homers were the most by a Japanese player since Sadaharu Oh in 1964. Mickey Mantle in the 1956 season hit 52 homers, drove in 130, and won the MVP. His OPS that season? identical to Murakami's in 2022. Now I'm not saying that Murakami is Mickey Mantle, but he's doing things in baseball that you just can't fathom without a comparison. Murakami was also intentionally walked 25 times in 2022, more than double his previous career high that he reached in 2020. He has become the most feared hitter in the MPB. As you can imagine, Murakami took home the MVP for a second straight season, he became the first unanimous MVP winner since Sadaharu Oh in 1977. Murakami has three seasons left until he arrives in the big leagues, and I am extremely excited to see what he brings to the table when he makes his MLB debut in 2026. In the meantime, tune into the World Baseball Classic to see Murakami team up with Shohei Otani for Team Japan. Obviously, a lot of things we talked about today, specifically his future contract, are contingent on his performance for the next three seasons in the NPB. Hopefully he can build off of the back-to-back -back MVP campaigns he had in 2021 and 2022 and put up a few more monster seasons before making the trip to the show. Let me know in the comments down below who you think Murakami will eventually play for in the MLB. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.